from the South Point studio. There. The perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. Comedy. See the over-under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yeah. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. For real. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> so I look at the clock. I go, ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. Born from the tragedy of 9-11, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is committed to helping our nation's heroes and their families in their darkest hours. When a first responder or veteran doesn't return home and leaves behind a young family, Tunnel to Towers supports them. The foundation pays off their mortgages and lifts their financial burdens through their Gold Star Family Home Program and Fallen First Responder Home Program. Through their Smart Home Program, catastrophically injured veterans and first responders regain their independence with a mortgage-free home, specially adapted adapted to meet their unique physical needs. Tunnel to Towers also provides housing assistance and services to our nation's homeless veterans through their Homeless Veteran Program. They are helping more than 2,000 in 2023 because no veteran should be living on the streets of the country they signed up to protect. Join Tunnel to Towers on its mission to do good and never forget 9-11 or the sacrifices made by our nation's heroes. Donate $11 a month at T2T.org. That's T, the number 2, T.org. The following is a Race Day Las Vegas presentation in association with Sirocco Productions Limited on the Race Day Las Vegas Radio Network. From the gaming capital of the world, time for Race Day Las Vegas, covering the sport of kings with a Las Vegas perspective. Now to the race desk with your host, Ralph Sirocco. From the backstretch to the turf club, at the race books and on the internet, to all horse players around the world, a good morning. All righty, all righty, all righty. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Race Day Las Vegas radio program as we begin another week of covering the great sport of Kings, Las Vegas style, on this Wednesday show. We come to you live and direct from the South Point Studios at the South Point Hotel Casino Complex on the fabulous Las Vegas Boulevard here in your gaming capital, Las Vegas, Nevada. We welcome you to the show. And, of course, we welcome all of you listening on many of the different platforms that we have. For those of you running around this morning trying to get to work or whatever and listening on your car, we're our radio station here in town. Our anchor station is Sports Talk 1400 AM in Las Vegas, of course, and 107.1 FM. On the websites, uh, we got plenty of them. RacedayLasVegas.com.Vegas.World.Global. You can get us streaming there on any one of those dots. And, of course, uh, your iPhone or your Android with the KSHP radio station app for listening. And the YouTube at, if you want to see and hear us, as we are on the South Point Studios streaming network at YouTube. And of course, for those of you watching now, welcome to the show as well. And of course, anywhere you get your podcasting, simply put, however, wherever, whenever you get us, welcome to the Race Day Show for this Wednesday. As we now get closer and closer, step by step, week by week, day by day, and hour by hour to the 150th running of the Run for the Roses, the Kentucky Derby. And uh, one more race, just one more, 
is left with small 20 points. That's all that's left, 20 points for the Kentucky Derby leaderboard for the uh, points to be one of the 20 horses that will already be eligible to go to the Kentucky Derby. But remember, that is only given the eligibility because day by day, you know, as it happens, as we move closer to the Kentucky Derby, there are defects either by health situations or whatever. So we're going to go over the top 20 as they stand now. And, of course, uh, the latest uh, future book closing odds, the paramutual closing odds in the final future book for the Kentucky Derby. And, of course, the Kentucky Oaks leaderboard as well, because it'll be a big weekend coming up on the first weekend of May. And we all started out on Thursday, May the 2nd, with a special Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby preview show right here in these studios at the South Point Studios on YouTube. The only place you'll be able to get that special on Thursdays is right here on YouTube. It won't be broadcast simulcasting anywhere else on our platforms of, uh, of our streaming and uh, deliveries, okay? It's only on the YouTube South Point Studios streaming. Just go to YouTube, hit South Point Studios, click us on, and you'll get it. It'll be Thursday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon Pacific time, 3 o'clock on Thursday, the 2nd of May. We're going to go over the Kentucky Oaks card, which is the following day, that Friday, and a preview of what we're going to do for the Kentucky Derby and the Kentucky Derby seminar that comes up the following day on Friday. And then, of course, on the following day, Friday, our usual race day shows in the morning, as we will throughout the entire week. And then, of course, Right after the Kentucky Oaks card is done and racing is conducted and completed in Southern California on the West Coast, at 6 o'clock we'll take the stage in the Grand View Lounge that is adjacent to the uh, race book right here at the South Point. It's a nice lounge. It's a lounge that's uh, that's, uh, set up for entertainment in the evening. But we're going to take it over that night at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, Jonathan Hardoon from the East Coast, John Lendo from Southern California, and me in between them. We'll do the Kentucky, our annual Kentucky Derby seminar in the Grandview Lounge on Friday. That is uh, the 3rd of uh, May, Kentucky Oaks Day, that Friday night there in the uh, Grandview Lounge. And then the next day, of course, is Kentucky Derby Day, the Run for the Roses, the 150th edition of the Run for the Roses. And we're going to be celebrating in the Grandview Ballroom upstairs. We ask you to join us. It's a huge, big ballroom with big banquet tables. Bring your friends. Each table seats between 8 and 12 uh, seats. Big, huge, multi-story, big screen TVs. And, of course, all the little TVs as well uh, dotted around the, uh, the uh, room because uh, there will be other racing going on that you can also participate in. So you won't have to miss anything at your local track if you don't want to. A bank of betting windows, betting kiosks, food and drink discounts, and a Kentucky Derby hat contest that features several different categories. The best horse themed, the best fascinator or fedora, best overall, etc. And it's cash prizes for the hat contest. And of course, the excitement of watching the Kentucky Derby there. You can please join us, me, Jonathan and John, and all of our friends so that we include you with us. To come, come on up in the Grandview Ballroom and enjoy the Kentucky Derby Day with us. Everything I just mentioned to you, from the time you park your car to the time you go through the gambit of all those things I just talked about, is all free, free of charge to you. So come on out and enjoy it with us. All right. As far as the weather is concerned right now across the country, the West Coast is clear, but no racing there today. Uh, the East Coast looks pretty good, but there's no racing at Aqueduct. There is racing in Kentucky at uh, Keeneland. And, of course, we'll have our handicappers, Jonathan Hardoon, Rich Ang, John Lindo, Jerry J., all set up to come on and talk about Keeneland today. A great Keeneland card, I might add, for this Wednesday. And uh, as far as the weather is concerned, a lot going on in Louisiana. I can tell you a lot going on in Louisiana. But uh, there's a little bit of action going across Kentucky, so we'll wait and see about the weather conditions in Kentucky. But it's dotted across the uh, south, uh, the south Gulf area by uh, Louisiana, right up through uh, the uh, the east kind of inner east coast, and of course uh, on up to Maine. But for the most part, it looks like it'll be pretty clear for the racing today. We have seven tracks on our racing menu today. 
So we'll wait and see about the weather there. As far as the weather here, it's going to get good now. It's getting better. Oh, yeah. 53 degrees right now outside. We're going to get up to 81 degrees today here in Las Vegas. And for the rest of the week through Friday, uh, we'll reach 87 on Friday. So we're getting in finally to the spring a la summertime type of weather here in Las Vegas. That's for sure. All right. Um, we will be taking a look at several uh, points that we want to make uh, with our handicappers. But right now, as far as this weekend, uh, on Saturday, there'll be 11 stakes races overall across the country of the tracks that we cover. Keeneland will have three stakes races on Saturday. And of course, one of them will be the Lexington stakes. You got one grade one and two grade threes. Laurel will have four stakes races on Saturday. Um, that, uh, of course, uh, uh, Mahoning Valley Race Course is going to have two. Oaklawn Park will have two. Oaklawn Park is going to have uh, one grade one and gr one grade two. And, of course, uh, no stakes races on Sunday. So it's kind of light, but uh, it's, it's going to be just, good, just as good as the same. All right. One more race, as we said, with uh, 20 points for the Kentucky Derby leaderboard, and that is the Lexington Stakes. Now, in the Lexington Stakes, that's already been drawn for. They have the field already uh, for the Lexington there's only one horse, Hades, that sits at 24th place right now, has 30 points. If he wins that race and gets to 50, he can bump one of the horses at the bottom of the eligibility. And as far as the eligibility there, uh, we'll get right to it here. Here's how it lines up for the Kentucky Derby right now. Sierra Leone has 155 points. Fierceness, 136. Catching Freedom, 125. Stronghold, 125. Resilience has 110. Forever Young, 100. And Endlessly, 100. They all have 100, and that's the uh, top seven in the, uh, the eligibility for the Kentucky Derby, as long as all the parts stay in the right place for these horses. And remember, the stalls, just 20 stalls for the Kentucky Derby. So finish uh, in eighth place is Doorknock. Just a Touch has 75, and Doorknock has 75. You got Track Phantom at 70, West Saratoga at 67, Just Steel at uh, 65. Just Steel is in 12th place now. In 13th place is Honor Marie at 65, as well as Just Steel. Domestic Product is at 60. Uh, Catalytic is at 50. Deterministic is at 50. Society Man is at 50. That's through 18 places now. That's through, uh, that's 17. In the 18th place is Mystic Dan at 46. Then you have uh, T.O. Password at 20th. This is a horse from Japan. That's the top 20 already eligible. Now, as I say, Hades is sitting at 30. He's in 24th place right now. If he gets the win in the Lexington and gets 50, he'll jump up and bump out uh, Mystic Dan and... Uh, he won't bump out Mystic Dan, but Mystic Dan will drop down to 20th place. Hades will then be in 19, 18th place, and a TO Password uh, might get knocked out as well. So, uh, and looking at the way it uh, feels, uh, No More Time is on the cusp, along with Hades, but No More Time has no more time left to make any of the 20 points. So that takes care of the Kentucky Derby. Those are the horses are in the Kentucky Derby qualified with points if they stay healthy and uh, continue on their way there. Now, uh, as far as the Kentucky Oaks is concerned, if I can get to that, the Kentucky Oaks, here's the way they line up for the Kentucky Oaks, top 20. Tarifa, 150. Where's My Ring, 125. Power Squeeze, 120. Leslie's Rose, 115. Torpedo Anna, 105. Those are all the ones with 100 points. In sixth place is Just FYI. Seventh is Jin Jin. Jody's Pride is eighth. Fiona's Magic, ninth. And Regulatory Risk is tenth. The top ten include Tappet Jenna Lee, Everland, Lemon Muffin, Into Champagne, Ways and Means, Our Pretty Woman, Vivi's Dream, Intricate, Alpine Princess, and Copion is the 20th as far as the Kentucky Oaks leaderboard. Any one of those horses that I just mentioned defect from the race, then you'll have a candid recharge and who could ask for more sitting waiting in the wings to bump into that. 
And that's the way the Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby fields look like right now. If they ran the race today, those will be the eligible horses for the Kentucky Oaks and the Kentucky Derby. Of course, you know what happens. There have been late defections right up to the morning of the race, as we all experienced in the last couple of years. So we will wait and see here. Remember, Rich Strike, the big monster Richter scale winner a couple of years ago at the Kentucky Derby, wasn't even in the field uh, 48 hours before the actual race. So we wait and see. But these are the horses that have already qualified to get a starting gate stall in the 20 stall starting gate for the Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby. All right. Other real quick news here. Um, Tom Albatrani, uh, the uh, trainer of uh, Bernardini, if you remember, has retired. His last uh, race was over the weekend. Tom Albatrani, the trainer, now retired. Bernardini was one hell of a racehorse, though, and he trained him. I read Ortiz Jr. has secured the mount on domestic pro- produce uh, for the Derby. Domestic produce gets I read. Uh, judge uh, has the judge in Kentucky has delayed the um, the um, the stay by uh, owner Zidane to get his uh, horse uh, Muth into the Kentucky Derby. He was supposed to make a decision on Monday. He did not. He's going to extend that decision to next Monday, the fifteenth of April. Because he said, and that's Judge Mitch, Mitch Perry in uh, Kentucky that's handling uh, this uh, case. He said uh, the reason for the uh, delay was because he wanted to understand, he wanted an explanation of why the, sus- the original suspension of Bob Baffert was extended by the racetrack. So until he gets that report from the racetrack, he will make the final decision, hopefully on Monday, on whether Muth gets into the Kentucky Derby under the training of Bob Baffert or not, by virtue of the lawsuit brought by the owner, Mr. Zidane. Uh, State of Maryland has got the okay from the Maryland uh, legislators there to now take over Pimlico Racecourse. They will now have a nonprofit uh, set up for Pimlico Racecourse to remodel Pimlico. Of course, that is the middle jewel of the Triple Crown, the Preakness home. Pimlico Racecourse now goes to the State of Maryland. That will happen later on this year. And as far as uh, all of the big races over the weekend, the Wood Memorial at Aqueduct, the Wood Memorial Day card, the handle was down 23.3% from last year. Unbelievable. All righty. And one little piece of news as far as we are concerned here in Las Vegas and our great town, our sports and gaming town and entertainment town, the National Finals Rodeo. The most popular, uh, of course, the, the, it's the Super Bowl of the rodeo season, that's for sure. And one of the most popular events here in Las Vegas that happens in December every year. Well, they like Las Vegas and we like them because they have now a contract to have the National Finals Rodeo here uninterrupted through 2035. So cowboy up. All right, we're going to be right back and start our race day show with uh, Jonathan Hardoon, John Lendo, Rich Ang. Aquas will be along with us. And of course, your racing menu. That all comes up next. Don't go away. We're here at the South Point Studios. Get us on YouTube right now. We'll be right back. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's Racebook has you covered. Back on race day at Las Vegas, taking a look at what happened on Sunday at Keeneland. Uh, they had a couple of stakes races, uh, and uh, those stakes races were the Palisade Stakes, the seventh on the card there on Sunday, 
The winner there was Fandom for Wesley Ward. That was Wesley Ward's second win of that day. Jose Ortiz writing $17.50, the win price there. Out uh, running Mansa Musa and uh, Refuel, who finished third. In the Beaumont Stakes for three-year-old fillies at seven furlongs, that grade two event was won by Denim and Pearls. It was a Brad Cox trainee. Lavi and Pratt rode there, paid $5.58, outrunning Harbor Springs, and you almost had me, who finished third in that race. That was at uh, Keeneland on Sunday. Santa Anita wrapped up uh, its uh, racing. Uh, the, it's the winter uh, spring racing season there at Santa Anita on Sunday. They will now take a break. They'll come back on the uh, 19th of uh, April uh, for Santa Anita. Uh, for a 29-day meet called the Hollywood Meet there. It's part of the old Hollywood Park uh, uh, racing dates that they have there. But wrapping up the winter and spring meet, mandatory payoffs on Sunday, a couple of nice stakes races there. The John Shear was won by King of Godsford. Uh, Antonio Fresu aboard paying $6.40 for trainer Phil D'Amato, outrunning Raging Torrent in that race, and uh, Miracle Mark. And in the uh, Angels flight stakes at six and a half furlongs on the turf, the winner there was Laline, Laline. Uh, and that uh, winner was also ridden by Antonio Friso and uh, Frisou and also trained by Phil D'Amato. So Frisou and uh, D'Amato won both stakes races on closing day at Santa Anita. That was uh, Frisou's third win of the day, paying $7.40, outrunning Alluring and Girl of My Dreams. And... Uh, that was uh, the end of Santa Anita. By the way, uh, for uh, the end of Santa Anita, uh, Juan Hernandez won the jockey title with 53 wins overall. That was his fifth Santa Anita title. His horses earned $3,683,348 there. But uh, believe it or not, although he had his fifth Santa Anita title, he's far away from the record at Santa Anita. The record at Santa Anita for winning jockey titles was the famous Bill Shoemaker. He won 17 of them in a row starting in 1951 and every year since then until 1967. What a run Bill Shoemaker had, as we used to call him, the shoe. Uh, Antonio Frisou had a good meet. He ran uh, second in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the standings with 20, uh, 46 wins there. Doug O'Neill won the training title with 30 wins. His horses amassed $1,797,470. That was his ninth Santa Anita title for O'Neill. And uh, Mark Glack finished second with 29. Verona Stable was the top owner with 11 wins there. Uh, one win over uh, Mr. Redham, who finished second with 10. And, of course, as we say, the Santa Anita Hollywood meet will start on Friday, the 19th of April, and go through June 16th for 29 days there. And that uh, concludes just about everything at Santa Anita. And finally, at uh, Oaklawn Park on Sunday, the Eclipse uh, Stakes was won by Edge to Edge. Rafael Bejarano for Chris Hartman, paying twelve twenty, outrunning Gun Pilot and uh, Tap- Tapatio Leo, who finished third. Are you ready for the pick fives yet Sunday at, uh, at Oaklawn Park? Early pick five. $10 even, 2820, 440, 4760, and 860. How about the fives for 50 cents paying $10,922.10? But if you think that was a lot, the late pick five with horses that paid $860, $53, $1960, dollars $12.20, and $14.80. How about the 50 cent pick five and the late pick five at Oakland on Sunday paying $56,271.40? Wow. And uh, Aqueduct on Sunday, no stakes races there. And uh, Brad Cox had a win. Todd Pletcher had a win. Manny Manny Franca was the only jockey that had more than one win. And that, of course, was uh, two victories on the day. Rudy Rodriguez, though, won the early double. He had two in a row, trainer Rudy Rodriguez, on Sunday at Aqueduct. Now time for your racing menu for today. And we remind you that uh, when we go to the racing menu each and every day, The first post times we broadcast on the show reflect that of the Pacific time zone. We are in the Pacific time zone. We're here at the South Point Studios. These will be the first post times that roll in right behind me in the race book today. We are in the Pacific time zone. Therefore, if you're listening on many of the different platforms that we have that stream around the world, we know we're in a lot of different time zones. So adjust 
whatever time zone you're in to the Pacific time zone. I don't want you to miss anything, of course, and making a bet like I miss mom and dad, okay? Here we go. Here's the menu for today. We begin with Tampa Bay Downs. Tampa Bay Downs has a super high five carryover, $2,628. And their first post time at Tampa Bay is set at 9.30 today. Next comes Parks Racing. Now, Parks Racing has a first post time of 9.40. They had a mandatory payoff so uh, in the pick five uh, pool the other day. So they'll start anew today. Parks Racing's first post time is 9.40. Next comes uh, Mahoning Valley Racecourse. Their first post time is 9.55 at Mahoning Valley. Their pick six carryover, their jackpot pick six carryover today, $96,018 at Mahoning Valley. First post time, 9.55. Then we go to Keeneland Racecourse. Keeneland today has a first post time of 10 a.m. 10 a.m. at Keeneland today. Following that comes Turf Paradise, where Turf Paradise has a pick six jackpot carryover. It's climbing $267,891 in the pick six jackpot carryover at Turf Paradise today. First post time, 125. And then we wrap up uh, the six uh, tracks today with Evangeline Downs. Evangeline Downs first post time is at 3.30 this afternoon. And, of course, we'll pick up the menu throughout the week. Tomorrow we'll have seven racetracks, Friday nine racetracks, and on Saturday 11 racetracks. All righty. Time to go to our man on the scene in the great state of New York, Mr. Jonathan Hardoon. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Ralph. How are you? I'm doing fine, my man. I'm getting kind of excited now. You know, the final four, everything's over with the March Madness. That final's done. And, of course, the football season is way in the rearview mirror. Now we're into baseball. And, of course, we still have basketball. The basketball playoffs are coming up, et cetera. But now we really zero in on the Kentucky Derby and all the great stuff around it. And, you know, I got to tell you that the Kentucky Oaks Day of Racing with the Kentucky Oaks, which is a prestigious race with oven within itself, and all the stakes races that surround these two events on Friday and Saturday, the first Friday and Saturday of May, going to really be a lot of fun and a lot of opportunity to make money. And we're sure glad that you and John are going to be right here with us to help us out. Yeah, and we have that show Thursday night, which may end up being better than the Derby show, to be honest with you, because the uh, the Oaks could be a great betting race, and uh, they have a lot of good stake races, and I guess we'll be doing them Thursday night right here on the YouTube channel at, from the South Point. Yes, we will. Uh, we uh, decided that we wanted to do that show on Thursday because the next day, which is Kentucky Oaks Day, by the time... By the time we conclude in the morning, our usual morning show with all the activity going on, and by the time we get to the next show, the Kentucky Oaks, uh, you know, uh, day will be over with. And so we felt if we did it on the Thursday before, you really get a run up into the big Kentucky Oaks day of racing. And of course, a little preview of what we'll be doing on the Kentucky Derby seminar on that night, Friday. So Friday's a big day because it has the Kentucky Oaks and then the seminar for the Derby. And then we flip right over to the Kentucky Derby. So uh, the Breeders' Cup preview show was so popular here, we decided to do the uh, Kentucky Oaks and Derby show on the uh, same way on that Thursday. It'll be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's only going to be seen here at the YouTube. So for those folks who have not tried YouTube out, don't wait until that day. Try us out before so you're familiar with it uh, at 3 o'clock on that Thursday, Pacific time. It's really very easy. Even I could figure it out. So if I could figure it out on the computer, anybody can, to be honest with you. Because when it comes to computers, I'm a little lost, Ralph. <laughs> well, I can tell you I'm an absolute five-star computer neophyte. So when I, can, when I tell you all you have to do is turn on your computer, get on the Internet, punch in YouTube. When you get to that page, then in the search bar on YouTube, just punch in South Point Studios, and bada-bing, you're there. <laughs> Yeah, just just there click on just click us on and you'll get the show. Really simple. It is idiot proof, so that's good news to yeah, hear. <laughs> which helps you and me out, that's for sure. <laughs> for sure. Now, a thought about uh, you know going into the Kentucky Derby right now. There's a lot of people who think that this is going to come down to fierceness and Sierra Leone, which is legitimate off of their past races. But uh, we all know that Kentucky Derby doesn't exactly go to Hoyle. 
No, you know, a lot of times they draw up a plan and it doesn't always work out. Listen, post position obviously is going to be very important. Uh, if fierceness or Sierra Leone draw the rail, you know, it's pretty tough to win from there. Um, they did add the new ex extended the starting gate. So I guess that helps the inside a little bit, they said. But we'll see what happens. But post positions are obviously important. A door knock, uh, is he going to decide to to go to the lead? The the, the only way he showed uh, that he could run, or are they going to? Uh, they're not going to raid him again. So, you know, there's a game within a game, and uh, you got to try to find some value. Obviously, at this point, Sierra Leone looks like the horse to beat, but a lot could happen between now and then. And I'm sure you're going to have a few defections, whether it be you know vet scratches or something always goes wrong. We know that it's very rare where They'll have this, the, the same 20 two weeks out as they will come starting, you know, come, come uh, the, the day of the race because something always goes wrong. It's just part of life. Yeah, no question about that. That's for sure. And uh, also, uh, you know, when we were, we're looking at um, the uh, Kentucky Derby, as far as uh, I'm concerned, we've got all the past performance information already done. So we can study that and, and look for our idiosyncrasies as far as our personal handicapping is concerned. But, you know, the post position draw and how they train when they get to Churchill Downs over the track that they'll be running in are two of the important elements, as far as I'm concerned, the ones that are left to really uh, have some uh, teeth in them when it comes to handicapping. I agree 100 percent. I mean, you know, believe me, what's what's going on today and what's going to happen then is it's totally it's going to change. It's you know, it's going to change. You know, things are going to occur. And again, like you said, post position, extremely important. And uh, how they train over that track is equally as important. And yeah, no question about that. That's for sure. And of course, uh, you know, there'll be 150,000 or so at the racetrack. That's for sure. There'll be people all over the place, deep everywhere. And it depends how these horses, uh, you know, behave as far as getting from their barn area uh, uh, along the outer railing of the uh, clubhouse turn and, and getting into the paddock. Now, they do have that new paddock that is a lot better, I think, as far as keeping horses calm than the old paddock. But still, you've got, you know, a lot of energy in the place and a horse can really lose a lot of energy in, in all of the activity before they actually get to the starting gate. Look at Sierra Leone on Saturday. I mean, he acted up. He, he delayed post a few minutes, and that was with 30,000 people. Uh, on Derby Day, there's going to be well over 100,000 people. Who knows how he's going to handle the crowd? You know, I'm sure they're going to try to work with him, but I don't know. How do you, how do you uh, invent that situation? Not going to be easy because you're not going to have that situation until that particular time. So... You know, it certainly wasn't good what he did on Saturday at, you know, with the start of that race. And if he draws an outside box or whatever, he's going to be behind the gate even longer with the crowd ramping him up. Who knows? We don't know what's going to be. You know, and the thing about it is uh, that uh, they have a really a golden opportunity on Friday, Kentucky Oaks Day, because they'll have, you know, uh, close to maybe 100,000 people, 80, 90,000 people there. So that's a good, pretty good, um, you know, practice area where you can bring the horse in through the paddock and all that. They, they call what they call schooling their horses and see how they act right. at least to, a, to a, a crowd like that. But those are the elements, those are the little idiosyncratic elements that, uh, you know, uh, may, uh, may bring us to a horse that we like at a price. As far as the prices are concerned, the final F Kentucky Derby Power Mutual Future Book Pool was conducted over the weekend. And I got to tell you, I'm going to give you the horse that, w uh, that wound up the favorite. You give, me, you give me what you think the price is. On the Future Book now, Fierceness was the favorite. What do you think his price is? Seven to two. Four to five. Four to five. <laughs> Good Closing <luck. laughs> odds, four to five on Fierceness. You Close realize enough. on Derby. You realize on Derby Day he will be a lot longer I than four to four. So you got to hold this bet, and he may not make. I mean, something could go wrong. Yeah. And you're betting in advance, letting them hold your money for a four to five shot. That has to be one of the worst bets of all time. Now this is coming off of the Kentucky Derby uh, website, so I'm assuming it is right. But they say uh, the odds on them. Uh, now let's see uh, at, at uh, your horse, the horse that you picked for the uh, bluegrass that did run second, a, a very good second. 
uh, I think it's uh, just a, um, what is it? Just a touch, just the Brad Cox. Yes, uh, just a touch, closed at 51 to 1. I don't think he'll be 50 to 1 Saturday, so that makes it pre- <laughs> that actually would be a pretty good bet. <laughs> now, uh, Sierra Leone, however, it closed at 10 to 1. That's a solid, nice price. That's a fair price because he's going to be a lot shorter on Derby Day. For the most part, most of these horses are the fair pri- fair price, but to take four to five on fierceness, no, no way, no thank you. Yeah, now uh, that is uh, as far as the Kentucky Derby Pool Six, which was the final one. It uh, a question, Ralph. A question. All other is like twenty two to one, right, or twenty five to one. Well, now it says field? it says all other other at thirty three to one. Now I'm not sure if this is updated or this is was was it uh, because they don't say the Kentucky Derby website is very. Um, I don't know what. Uh, it doesn't give you a lot of definite well, let information. Me let me ask you a question. If Muth happens to get in, so he falls in under All the other others. category. Yeah, you're going to get 25 today. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna, if Muth happens, if the judge says Muth is a go, then he's going to be the king of the all others at that price. So we'll wait and see for I sure. I wonder if the judge made a bet. If the judge made a <laughs> bet in the future book and has all other, <laughs> well, there may be a conflict. I'm wondering if the too. owner of Muth decides to send the judge an envelope with a bet in it. Who knows? You know, uh, these days with politics, you never know. Anyhow, uh, at least today we have, uh, you know, usually on Wednesdays, we always had uh, Gulfstream and uh, Tampa Bay. Today, though, uh, of course, Tampa Bay is running. Gulfstream is is not uh, because they're in the royal meet now, but uh, it's it's going to be fun today anyhow because Keeneland uh, is running today and Keeneland always has uh, great racing there. So um, are we uh, getting a pick at Keeneland today? We're getting a pick at Tampa and Keeneland. I'm getting rumors that Keeneland may be off the turf, and my selection was for the turf in the sixth race. So I don't know, Ralph. Should I give the turf only, or should I pull an audible and go to the seventh race? You tell me what to do. Well, I'm going to tell you what to do by virtue of my listeners out there. Give us both. <laughs> well, then why'd right, you ask? Six, <laughs> I'm always right, looking. Six, I'm six, always six, looking out for the listeners. You know that. You love to pull those extra teeth out. You should have been a dentist. Yeah. In the uh, first of our two radio plays comes in the sixth race at Keelan. This is a mile on the turf, and this is turf only. I like the number eleven horse in here, Alexis Zorba. This is a four-year-old call for the Mike Maker Barn, coming off of a freshening since February 3rd. He's an improving horse. He's getting better with each start. Rider switch today to I Ride Ortiz, 5 to 1 on the morning line. Number 11, Alexis Zorba, wins today's sixth race out at Keelan. So now, if that race comes off the turf, my radio selection will move to the seventh race today, where number five, a Rocketeer, a three-year-old call from the Brad Cox Barn, makes his first start as a three-year-old. This horse was highly regarded as a two-year-old. He won his career debut at Keelan, returns getting Lasix today for the first time, stretching out to a mile in his 16th, training extremely well. Seven and two on the morning line, number five, Rocketeer, wins today seventh out at Keelan. So you got two from Keelan, and we're going to go to Tampa Bay and look at race number four, six furlongs on the main track, and I like the number seven horse in here, Sassy But Precious, Four-year-old filly from the Gerald Bennett barn. Bennett took over the training two starts back, and either one of her races for Gerald Bennett are good enough to win here. Amador Santos aboard to ride. Eight to one on the morning line. Number seven, sassy but precious. Upsets and wins today's fourth race out of Tampa Bay Downs. Well, all I can say is you did that very well. Everybody understands that. That's for sure. And uh, that's okay. Uh, you, you know, uh, you'll, you'll grow another molder in there. Don't worry about it. In, <laughs> in any case, uh, recapping Jonathan Tampa Bay race four, number seven, Keeneland race six, number 11, turf only. And uh, Keeneland race, I'm sorry, race six, take that back in race six, number 11, turf only in race seven, number five, no matter what. How about that? Correct. Perfect. All right, Jonathan, we will let you go to work and uh, start uh, doing your penciling in on the Derby and all that good stuff, and we will uh, talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, Ralph. Stay safe and be well. Got it, my man. Okay, coming up next, uh, Rich Ang will give us his his wrap-up on the NCAA basketball tournament finals where his Connecticut won and covered, so he cashed his future book bet there. 
And of course, uh, we'll get a pick out of them for Keeneland as well. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Born from the tragedy of 9-11, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is committed to helping our nation's heroes and their families in their darkest hours. When a first responder or veteran doesn't return home and leaves behind a young family, Tunnel to Towers supports them. The foundation pays off their mortgages and lifts their financial burdens through their Gold Star Family Home Program and Fallen First Responder Home Program. Through their Smart Home Program, catastrophically injured veterans and first responders regain their independence with a mortgage-free home, especially at Adapted to meet their unique physical needs. Tunnel to Towers also provides housing assistance and services to our nation's homeless veterans through their Homeless Veteran Program. They are helping more than 2,000 in 2023 because no veteran should be living on the streets of the country they signed up to protect. Join Tunnel to Towers on its mission to do good and never forget 9-11 or the sacrifices made by our nation's heroes. Donate $11 a month at T2T.org. That's T, the number 2, T.org. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. Okay, back on Race Day Las Vegas. Let's take a look quickly at the field for that Lexington, which is the last 20 points that can be had for the Kentucky Derby leaderboard this year. It'll be held, of course, on Saturday at Keeneland, grade 3, mile 16th. 400000 is the purse for three-year-olds only. And uh, we will start uh, from the rail. Number one is Secret Chat. Joel Rosario for Roderick Rodriguez. The two is the win- Wine Stewart. The Wine Stewart, Luis Saez for Mike Maker. The three is Dilger, an Irish bread. Tyler Caflion for Safi Joseph Jr. The four is Footprint. Brian Hernandez for K- Kennedy McPeak. The five is Hades. Hades, uh, Jose Ortiz aboard for Joseph Orsino. Can knock a horse out if he wins the race with the, the points he gets out of the Lexington. Number six is How's Your Attitude? Adam Basisha for John Ennis. The seven is Ever Do It. Axel uh, Concepcion for uh, Kevin Rice. The eight is Encino. Florent Garreau for Brad Cox. If you remember, he got scratched over the weekend, uh, and uh, Jonathan said he was moving towards uh, going into Lexington. He's entered in that. The nine is Liberal Arts. Ired Ortiz Jr. for Robert Medina. And the ten is Lucky Jeremy. Uh, uh, Geraldo Corrales for Bill Morey. And that's the field for the Lexington on Saturday, the final, final race for any Kentucky Derby leaderboard points. Now let's go to the man who picked the winner of the finals in the NCAA basketball championship on Monday, Rich Ang. Good morning. Good morning, Rich. Hey, good Good morning, Ralphie. And again, I'm wearing my UConn hat in honor of the Huskies getting the job done on Monday night. They did, and it looked like that uh, Purdue was going to give them a little bit of a close game for a while. But as uh, Kentucky, uh, as Connecticut, as Connecticut did in the entire series, come the second half, they just, uh, you know, throttled it down and pulled away. Yeah, and if people, you know, listened to the show on Sunday and my analysis of the championship game, you know, I thought that if uh, UConn could somehow play Edie straight up with Klingon and the, the backup center Johnson, I thought the other four Connecticut starters and the bench were far superior to Purdue's other four starters and the bench, and uh, that proved out to be 100% correct because they, they just killed Purdue. Uh, Edie got his, but the other kids didn't get any for Purdue. Yeah, they were they were very under underproductive in the, uh, the big uh, game, that's for sure, and uh, it was exciting to see all the antics uh, after as well and all the commentary. But uh, Connecticut now, two-time NCAA college basketball champions. And I got to tell you, if they get that team back, it might be hard. It might be a three-peat. Well, you know, uh, you know the thing is, uh, when UConn won two years ago, they lost their top three players to the NBA. 
I've read some reports that they could lose as many as their top six players Oops. to the NBA draft this year. So if that's the case, the next year's UConn Huskies will bear no resemblance to this yeah. year. And I saw the first price on UConn was 12-1, to 1, which is ridiculous because you have no idea who's going to suit up in a no. Huskies uniform next fall. No, that's for sure. Well, this week, of course, is uh, golf's uh, premier event, the Masters. That'll start tomorrow. And, of course, uh, it'll be at uh, that famous golf course in Augusta. And, I, and they have, uh, you know, complete odds for the players here at the uh, South Point here. And now we're getting into the baseball season, as you know, and it's uh, America's pastime. But now we're concentrating on getting to the Kentucky Derby and the big Kentucky Derby weekend. And for that matter, the Triple Crown. Who knows if there's a Triple Crown winner sitting out there? Yeah, I heard you and Jonathan talking about the field bet for the Derby Future Book. Yeah, if, if Bafford wins his lawsuit, the field will become Bafford, depending on uh, who else uh, goes <laughs> yeah. in there with Booth and others. So it uh, might be pretty pretty uh, salty at 33-1. to 1. <laughs> No kidding. That, that, would be a, that would be a bargain, that's for sure. And, of course, that is what was posted on the Kentucky Derby website, their official website. I can tell you I'm a little bit... Um, just a little bit wheezy about uh, whether that is right or not, but that's what they posted, and so that's what uh, we gave out on the show. If it is different, then uh, you'll have to complain to the Kentucky Derby folks there. That's for sure. Uh, well, we'll have a lot going on here. That's, uh, that's uh, you know, we're going to have a great time here starting on uh, that Thursday night uh, show here at the uh, South Point Studios uh, Network. But, uh, Richie, I-, I know that uh, during the time that Santa Anita is off, uh, you're going to do Keeneland, and when Santa Anita returns, you're going to still do Keeneland because every year you do the Keeneland meets both in the spring and the fall along with Southern California racing whenever it has racing uh, on their days. Yeah, that's correct. I'll have two sheets when Santa Anita opens back up on the 19th. So I've got a Keeneland sheet for uh, for today. And, uh, uh, you know, just, just one final note on college basketball, and then I'll sweep it under the hood, Ralph. Uh, you know, I started out slow with my picks in the tournament, mm-hmm. but I finished fast. I, I won 6-0 and with the, my last uh, two weeks' worth of picks, so I hope people hung in there with me through the hard times because the good times did come. Yes, and uh, thank goodness uh, we found the ATM just in time to have that run with <laughs> you, that's for sure. Anyhow, what do you got for today at Keeneland? Let's go to race number one at Keeneland. Six furlongs, maiden claiming 50. Uh, let's go with the number three, Blue Eyed Soul, two to one in the morning line. This horse got a prep race at Turfway Park for Wesley Ward. Uh, ran well, ran second. Now picks up uh, John Velasquez to ride for Ward. Should be a lot tighter in the second start off the layoff. So let's go with the three, Blue Eyed Soul, race one, Keeneland. All right, you got a first race at Keeneland, by the way, uh, today for folks uh, wanting to get in on that, and that is the start, of course, of the early pick five. Uh, Keeneland uh, racing uh, starts, uh, let's see, at uh, 10 a.m., 10 o'clock Pacific time. So we got uh, two hours after we get off the air. Hey, thanks a lot, Rich. Hey, thanks, Rob. Good luck, everybody. All right, you got it. Uh, Richie doing a yeoman's job. We are going to go right now to John Lindo standing by. And, uh, John, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. How you doing? I'm doing fine, my man. We finally wrapped up Santa Anita and uh, Juan Hernandez and uh, Doug O'Neill, the uh, kingpins there for that meet. But uh, now we get a little time off and uh, maybe, uh, you know, to rejuvenate and, uh, you know, reload some of the uh, field sizes. I got to tell you, the last three days at Santa Anita was reminiscent of the old old times when they had great cards. Yeah, and you know, there were people at the racetrack. There were 32,000 at the track on Saturday and 14,000 on Sunday. It, it's kind of sad that we have that, that dark week now. I thought that, that was really the first time they built some momentum during the meet, and I would have loved to have come right back this week. But, uh, you know, they had the scheduled, and uh, we'll go with it and see where we end up. Yeah, but maybe, John, it's because that the horsemen knew that they were going to be off for a week that they decided to enter on those weekends. If they didn't have it, those field sizes might not have been that big. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You're sitting in the barn otherwise, so you got to run. And, uh, yeah, so we'll see. Uh, you know, I would think now for this meet coming up, guys like Phil D'Amato, now that they have that Tapita training track, he can train those turf horses a little more. I wouldn't be surprised to see Phil D'Amato go on a run with all those grass horses he has. I can tell you this, John, finally, let's just finally, let's hope we're going to get springtime weather into the summertime and we won't have to cancel any because of uh, the, uh, the weather that's going through Southern California. 
Uh, but as uh, as we kind of take a, a breath before Santa Anita starts the Hollywood meet on the 19th of uh, April, we have a chance to kind of fine tune and uh, amass a lot of the uh, material we need for handicapping for the big Kentucky Derby weekend. And of course, Keeneland, uh, which is running today and Keeneland, their meet, it's always a fun meet to handicap and bet as well. Oh, I like it. And you, you might want to make notes. Uh, last week, uh, the main track, they didn't add a lot of water to it because it was so cold. I think they were afraid it was freezing. And uh, the main track early speed dominated the main track sprints there. So when you come back and see those horses run, horses coming from off the pace took all the worst of it sprinting opening weekend at Keeneland. All right, uh, John, you have a Lindell report today for Keeneland. It's here at the South Point Racebook free of charge. Covers all the races as a suggested late pick four and all that goody information at the bottom. The complete comprehensive Lindell report for today at Keeneland available now only in one place in Las Vegas, Nevada. And that's right here at the South Point Racebook free of charge, complimentary because they love horse players here. John, give us a horse. Race number five, number one, Goshen. Uh, comes out of a fast race at Turfway Park. He's one on the dirt. He's one in the mud. He's got tactical speed. And even though he's down in class, he's in a 10,000 starter, so he can't be claimed. So that's a positive. Rider switch to Tyler Gaffalione. I don't think there's any way we get the 8-to-1 morning line. I think that's a bad line. But if we get 7-to-2 or 3-to-1, that's a fair price. So race number five, number one, Goshen at Keeneland. And we'll take it. Number one, Goshen at uh, Keeneland in uh, race number five. That's, uh, of course, wrapping up the early pick four, early pick five at Keeneland. In the fifth race, the one Goshen is John Lindo's pick for the race day listeners. John, we'll talk to you tomorrow because Keeneland's running tomorrow too. You got it, Ralph. Good luck today. All right, you got it, my man. Now we're going to go to Jerry Jackowitz standing by. And all I can say is I have no idea what Jerry's going to talk about, but good morning, Jerry. Good morning, Ralph. What are we talking about today? You know, we just saw some really important races, the Bluegrass, the Wood Memorial, the Santina Derby, and of course, the Florida Derby is not too far in our past history. So I thought we could talk briefly about what I think are the, th- maybe the three most important horses from the from the whole set. Okay. Two minutes. Pretty soon. I know you asked for five, but... I'm really, I would really be hard pressed to go past two if you really want to know the truth. Uh, okay. Sierra Leone and uh, Fierceness look head and shoulders above the rest to me right now. Not only on their ability level, which is very high, but, and when I say very high, I'm talking about very high in terms of historic great horses, not just in terms of, you know, a fast horse here and there. Um, and um, and then we have, um, there's some development we have coming in with a stronghold. It was sort of interesting, but he's he's got a ways to go to to get forward. We had Resilience, who, who showed tremendous improvement in uh, the Wood Memorial, but we would call that being very topish and probably bouncy. Same thing with Society Man. So really out of the, uh, it's interesting, Doorknock, he ran, he had a perfect trip down on the rail. He came out into the middle of the stretch. He was right alongside Sierra Leone and Sierra Leone just looked at him and laughed and went on about his business and door, door knock sort of, sort of just shriveled up. That's all I can let say. Let me, let me ask you this, uh, uh, Jerry, because we've got about, uh, about uh, 40 seconds left before I have to wrap up. But if the judge in Kentucky on Monday says that Muth can run in the Kentucky Derby under Bob Baffert, and Muth is in that field. Is he one of your two, three, or whatever? How do you see Muth getting into this field if it happens? Um, he, he's certainly a contender. I, I haven't. I really wasn't analyzing him that carefully over the weekend, but um, he's got a look about him. But you know, you really look at Muth, you see imagination, you see stronghold, and mm-hmm. they're they're six or seven lengths off of fierceness right now. And I mean, off of uh, Sierra Leone and they're probably nine lengths behind fierceness, fierceness. It's, it's, it's a big gap. That's how good fierceness in Sierra Leone is. The issue is I wanted to just say this before we get off the show today. Sure. Is that Sierra Leone's last race, well, absolutely spectacular in every way, 
may have been too much. I mean, he just ran oh, a huge, okay. huge lifetime top. He might have topped and out. And the then. fierceness, on the other hand, is ready to go right through his two-year-old number. So. All right. Uh, well, uh, thank you for trying to get that in for us as well. But we have uh, one thing left to say to close up this Wednesday show. And you're going to say it. Have a great race day, everybody. <laughs>